Most people believe that they need to be motivated or disciplined to get work done. But what if I told you that there's a reliable way to make yourself work without motivation or discipline? I'm Salim, I'm a final year med student and I've also done an undergrad and postgraduate degree. And like you right now, I've had times where I'd be on YouTube when I should be doing work. But over my eight years at uni, I figured out a reliable method to immediately make myself work even when I feel lazy, so that I work efficiently and still have time for more of what I care about. So I'll go through the five steps of the flow method which covers actionable steps on the mindset you need to help you do this too. And the last point had a massive role in helping me get into med school and start this YouTube channel so stick around until the end for this important point. So first I have a question. When do you feel the most resistance to doing work? Usually it's when you try to start a task rather than carrying on. And because of this it makes sense for me to explain the first step you need to take so that you can start doing work even when you don't want to. And this is by making sure to have a pre-focus routine. And I like comparing this to exercising. When I'm at the gym, I warm up before I go on to using the heavier weights so that my muscles can get ready to handle the higher weights. And in a similar way for working, this is doing something easy or simple that's only ever done before you start working or studying. It's there to act similar to the warm up exercise at the gym because it doesn't need much effort to do, but it helps you directly prepare your energy into what you'll be doing next. So as an example for a pre-work routine, one thing I do is spend exactly 10 minutes to do nothing besides think. I just think about what I want to work on, planning the exact thing I'd be starting on so that when the 10 minutes is up, I'm aware of what I immediately need to do. Or another example is that I do a lesson on Duolingo or Brilliant to ease myself into a focused mindset. Leave a comment below for a routine that you do for yourself. Just make sure that the routine is something you only do before working so that you condition your mind to associate this routine with your work. And now I want you to think back to something I know you've experienced. Think back to a time where you were on your phone and somebody came up to you. They started talking to you, but you couldn't really listen to them properly because your mind was on your phone. But after you put your phone away, you don't remember what they said, so they repeat what they said and now you can properly speak to them. Those experiences make it very clear that you can't do multiple things at once and this applies to getting work done. So what you should do is have tunnel vision. But this isn't only to avoid multitasking, there's a second part to this. But first, the best way to avoid multitasking is to apply Parkinson's law for a brain dump. And what does this mean? Give yourself only three minutes to list down everything on your mind that you need to get done and pick up to three of the most urgent things to do today. Whichever one you pick up first is your most urgent, meaning your most time sensitive, so start with that. People think too much and that clouds their judgment, but by making it quick, your brain just knows what needs to be done and what can wait until later without you having to actually think too much. And I said there's a second part to this. So similar to having tunnel vision for directing yourself mentally, you should have tunnel vision physically too. In an exam setting, you only have what you need. So make your workspace similar where if there's something you don't need, get rid of it so your mind and eyes stay focused. Because literally anything can become a distraction. And you might think, oh, but your desk isn't clear and you're not wrong. But I've only ever used my desk to work and I don't have a problem with focusing anymore. So this point isn't for me. But now for the next point, there is something I do have a problem with that most people have too. Quite a lot of the time when I have to go to the gym or start editing my next video, I don't have any motivation to do them or I feel a very strong resistance to doing them. Because it takes a lot of effort, they take up a lot of energy to get through. But what's helped me maintain going to the gym 5 times a week for the past few months or have a video out every single week is having a low threshold for effort. This is when I told myself that I don't need to do anything big. I don't have to script, record and edit a video in one day. All I have to do right now is think of one thing I can start doing and feel free to stop after that's done. If I don't want to go to the gym, I'll just take a walk to my gym and back. Or for editing, this might only be adding music and sound effects to the videos. And when I do this, I notice that I always end up doing more than this low threshold. 99% of the time, I'd end up going to the gym while almost finish editing a video. So for you, this could be doing the smallest thing to make progress on your work or studying, whether that's organizing your schedule for tomorrow, doing a few practice questions, or writing a small paragraph for an essay. This works because starting with nothing is what's difficult. But once you get going, your mindset naturally shifts as you build momentum with your task. And this idea of minimal effort links well with the next point, which is a rule that you need to follow. So over the past few months, I said that I've been going to the gym five times a week, and this is the same for practicing the piano five times a week or working on my YouTube channel. And what made it possible to be this consistent and still be flexible is following the two day rule. And there's one thing I'll get to that will help you follow this rule. But first, this is a rule where you aren't allowed to skip more than two days in a row. The flexibility comes from the fact that if I really don't want to go to the gym today, that's fine. 
I just have to make sure I go tomorrow. And the thing that helps me do this is identifying my best hours for what I need to do. So for gym, I have the most energy in the morning, so I make sure that I save early mornings for the gym. Or for piano, I like practicing at night, so I leave that for later. This works with the rule because I can anticipate when I'll be bothered to do the thing, so that I don't feel bad if I miss gym today after med school, because I know I'll be happy to go early tomorrow morning. This is something you can apply to almost anything, like making sure to study at a time you focus better. And having a friend do this with you can help you both be accountable for each other because you probably won't want to lose to your friend or you wouldn't want to disappoint them. And before the next point, you might have noticed that I haven't had a sponsored video in some time. And it's not because I haven't been getting sponsor opportunities, it's because I was thinking of how can I promote something to you that's as helpful as possible besides my Instagram or YouTube content. I do believe in the sponsors I've mentioned in the past, but I felt as though there was more I could do to help you learn better, not just for your academic life, but also your personal life. So I've been working on something I can give you by directly helping you with your specific problems for productivity or studying. And that's through a one-to-one -one online coaching service where you can directly speak to me about any problems you're facing with studying or productivity. The purpose of these video calls is to help me understand your personal problems, your goals and things you want to improve on so that I can create a personalized action plan and give you detailed advice that's going to level up your productivity or grades. And these consultations are just one part of the package because even after them we'll keep in regular contact and I'll make sure you're progressing well and address any problems or questions you might have. And you might be thinking, how much does it cost? So I'll have two offers. For students, I know that money's hard to come by, so I'll have a form you can fill out with a reasonable price for you to suggest, and we can work from there. But because of this, I'll only have four spaces for this student offer. For everyone else, including students that missed out on the spaces, I'll have a fixed price that changes depending on supply and demand, but there'll be around 10 to 15 spaces. So if you want real personalized advice that I'm confident is going to take your productivity or academic life to the next level, visit my website linked in the description, and I'll see you in our next call. And now for the next point, I have another question. How often do you find yourself comparing your progress with another person's? I've had people commenting on my videos wondering how I manage everything I do because they say they'd find it impossible to do. And that mindset makes it even harder for them to get themselves to work. And it also shows me that they feel they should have accomplished more with their time. And this has been a problem for me and I'm sure it's affected you too. Because even for piano or exercising, I feel that there's more I could do to make progress, more effort I can put in or different things I can try. Especially when I see how far other people have gone, which can be demotivating. Motivating. But what I find useful to make myself work is overcoming the mental barriers and I have a personal example at the end. So before that, the first thing you need to do is really understand why something is important to you and why you aren't doing it. Because when was the last time you sat down to deeply think about why you need to study for that exam besides thinking, oh, I need to pass or why you're working the job you have that you don't really enjoy. Write down the immediate and long-term reasons for why you need to do something because that can make you more likely to get on with it when you realize what can happen if you don't do it or can even help you realize that it's not actually that important and you should be focusing on something else instead. For example, I remember a point where I didn't want to study for the admissions test back when I was applying for med school and it especially didn't help seeing how competitive it was to get into graduate entry medicine. But I spent quite a bit of time thinking about why it was important that I did study, what I was worried about happening if I didn't study and what could help me want to study. When I spent time thinking about why it was important, I thought beyond the oh I need to get a high score to get an interview. I thought about how it would set me up to become a doctor, how it would help me learn about things I'm actually interested in and even back then I was thinking about how I'd make a YouTube channel as a med student. Because I thought about why it was important I could then focus on the process of doing because I realized the importance of taking action instead of only focusing on the end result. And this focus on end result is something we typically do because the end result is all we see online from other people. So spend a good amount of time writing these things for what you need to be doing. Spend even up to an hour if you have to because it'll remind you why you need to make progress. But another problem is that even if you can think of good reasons to make yourself of work when you don't want to, it doesn't mean you'll be using your time efficiently. I've had this problem a lot in my undergrad degree where I spent a lot of time studying but because I wasn't using time productively, I studied a lot more than I really had to, which took time away from my personal life. But after thousands of hours of studying, I figured out the most important things to reliably get high grades while studying as little as possible. And in this video here, I talk about the key things I've learnt from 8 years at university that can help you make use of your study time as best as possible. So click the video to learn more.